Have you ever wondered what would the world sound if every color is represented by one color? Just let's give it a try. Hi everyone, my name is Lazar, and today on the stage with me are Georgi and Nicola, and together with Daniel, the one on your right, and our mentor Srijan, we are the members of the Barfoot team. And we had the honor, privilege, and luck to represent Serbia on the last year's Imagine Cup finals. For all of you who don't know, Imagine Cup is the world's largest student competition in technology organized by Microsoft. And over the years, over 2 million students competed in Imagine Cup. And last year, we were among the 13 best teams in the category World Citizenship. And today, we would like to talk to you about what Sonochrome all about. We'll make you think how colors are important to us. And uh, we'll talk about our whole, whole adventure called Sonochrome and Imagine Cup. So now, I don't know, have you ever thought how colors are important to us? Now, let's take five seconds and think, what is the meaning of color red to you? <coughs> or green? Or blue? Even if we are not aware of it, colors are a very big part of our everyday life. We perceive 90% of our surroundings with our eyes. And as much as we think about it, colors are something that we take for granted. We don't think about them. We learn them, and now we just know what color is what, which color is what, which color. And if somebody told us that this shirt is yellow, we would call it yellow for the rest of our lives. And that's one perspective that we want to change with Sonochrome. We, because our brains are accustomed to what we have been taught. In the past, blind people, uh, if they wanted to find out what color is which, uh, they just asked someone and someone told them, this is yellow, this is red, this is green. And with the development of technology, now we have devices, you can just bring them to a surface, it will tell which is which color. And we use colors every day for various things. A lot of companies, as you can see, brand themselves on colors. And they, we, they're recognizable by that. And we connect with them by colors. Uh, and while we were developing Sonochrome, we've spoken to a lot of blind people. And even though they never seen colors, they're really aware of them. They, know, they read a lot and they know that if I say that I'm red, that I'm angry, and they know that red is the color of love, passion, emotion, and they know that blue is wide open, that blue is something distant and cold. And we, we also have sounds and uh, songs that make us happy or songs that make us sad. And with Sonochrome, we want to achieve that connection between colors and sounds. The inspiration for our application we got by watching a TED talk, Mr. Neil Harbison. He's colorblind since he was born and he never seen colors, but with a team of scientists, he created a device that is attached to his skull, as you can see, at it, at, and it discharges certain vibration frequencies on his head uh, based on what color is dominant in front of him. So, he knows what colors are surrounding him, even though he never seen them. And he's using that device for 10 years, and his brain has changed. Now, he dreams in sounds like we dream in colors. His brain has developed some kind of synesthesia. And we liked his idea. One sentence that he uttered intrigued us. I listen to colors. And that was really one initial spark for us. So we decided to use his idea and to modify it so that everyone who uses modern technology can have access to that idea and to that experience. He uses frequencies, but we thought that sounds of instruments can give a much better experience. So we used uh, like uh, 
piano and guitar sounds because we believe that that can increase that experience. And blind people in general who use our application can learn to listen to colors going step by step. The whole idea of Sonochrome is to develop that relationship in the learning brain. In the beginning, we only implemented the part when you can open our app, you can take a picture of some object and it will give you a sound that corresponded to a color that's dominant in front of you. But that was just the beginning really because as I said, those devices already exist. We wanted to go much further. So we tried and we implemented the real-time feature of Sonochrome. So when a blind person or a person who uses our application opens Sonochrome and the real-time feature, it can really listen to the whole surroundings that's around them. They can experience it in the same way as Mr. Neil Harbison. And now we'll show you how Belgrade looks through sonochrome or sounds. <laughs> Now comes the part that you all want to hear. Uh, how are colors transformed into sound? And it's quite simple. You see, a camera can detect around 16 million colors. And there are around 1,600 colors that are named. So when, a ca uh, when you take out your phone and you point a camera at an object, uh, a camera takes a picture. And then we take out uh, a few of the pixels from that picture, from that image, and send it to our application. We send the red, green, and blue code. Our application then takes that code and transforms it into hue, saturation, and lightness. We then, uh, we then calculate the sums of the squares of the differences between the red, green, and blue of the color the camera just picked and all the named colors and we do the same for HSL. After we get that, we add the two sums, and we add the HSL one twice, because it's twice more important, and we're looking for the smallest number possible, because when we have a smallest number, we have the smallest difference. We have the smallest difference between the color the camera just picked and one of the named colors. So that is the most similar color to the color in our surrounding. All the named colors have been assigned to one of the 10 basic colors, and it was done by hand, by us. The program just has that connection. You see, uh, I talked about the color, but it's only for one pixel, and the image has lots of them. So we, uh, we are looking of, for the majority of the pixels that have the same color, because that is the most dominant color. When we, when we have that, we, uh, we have just transformed a 60, uh, uh, we have just transformed us from 60 million colors to 1,600 named colors to 10 basic colors. Uh, the final step is the connection between the basic colors and the sounds. And the standard for that does not exist. So we kind of created it. We made it as such that similar colors sound similarly. So you will never confuse different colors like red and blue. Now that we have all that, we can hear the uh, we can hear the color of of we can hear uh, we can hear the sound of the most dominant color around, in our surrounding. So basically, magic. <laughs> you have all heard how bell bell rate sounds. And I have just explained Sonochrome's magic. But that process, it can be reversed. So we can, uh, so colors like green, pink, purple, and brown can be connected through sounds. And that would sound something like this. Okay, so we've covered practiced learning in real time. So what's next?
what's the next logical step when you have a new experience? You want to capture that experience to save that experience somehow. You want to share it with the people you love or to relive it again sometime afterwards. So basically, you want to save a memory. Memories make a big part of our lives. And uh, we simply want sometimes to relive that experience that we had once. So the latest feature that we implemented, which is still in the development, is picture to song transformation. We implemented a feature that processes every picture and generates a song from that picture. How do we do that? First, we have a picture that we took, a picture that we took previously or at the time, and we generate a song which has two components, a chord progression and a solo. First thing that we do is detect all the objects in the picture. We are doing that using Sobel's algorithm, which is basically uh, convolution of functions in signal processing, and detect all the objects in the picture. Then we merge similar objects, because sometimes, due to camera defect, blurry lines or shadows, one object can be divided into several objects. Afterwards, we find all the objects, we have all the objects, their ordering, their color, and the, percent, the percentage they take in the picture. With that information, we generate chord progression. Chord progression is basically the ID of the picture. So when you take a picture of the C here or anywhere else, the chord, the chord progression, the ID, will be similar because it is the picture of the C. And you can recognize that those colors are present, present in the picture. On the other hand, solo on top of it is different. It differs from a device to a device. Chords in the chord progression and the notes in the solo are based on the colors that are in the picture. And we chose to implement the solo part differently because you and I can look at the same picture and experience it, experience it differently. So when we have all those information, we generate a song. One, also one big part of that song are the colors that are in, uh, meaning the light, lightness or darkness of them. So if dark colors are more present in the picture, the tempo of the song is slower. If light colors, colors are more present, the song is quicker, like funnier. So we have all that, and now every picture has its own song. Every song has its own picture. Let's hear how that sounds. I know that this may seem strange and abstract, and believe us when we say that when we started doing on this project, it was the same for us. But when we were developing and working more and more, we got accustomed to listen. Got, we got accustomed to listening to colors. We took take colors for granted, and what we want to do with Sonochrome is to deliberately induce the synesthesia so that you get accustomed to listening to colors. In that way, we can have something else in common with blind people and to share ex experience that we perceive through our eyes and share it with them. We know that Sonochrome is not an answer to the question how to help people, but we believe it's the answer to the question how to improve the life of any individual. Thank you.